how we approach combat in the Division 2 is going to be very different from the Division because there are gameplay and enemy AI differences that encourage cover play. To add to that, the Division players, most of us, are coming from the Division 1 where we played Endgame for about 3 years and we became so strong there was almost no challenge for us anymore. Now we have the Division 2 and so far it's been noticeable from everyone that's played the game that every single agent will need to adjust their playstyles because of the enemy AI behavior and the enemy AI damage. And if you've noticed, the enemy does significant amounts of damage and so in combat, as you're dealing with different enemy types, you have to play slightly differently because the hyenas are prone to rush you, while the black tusks and the true sons are prone to use advanced combat tactics like flanking. And then you also have different enemy types that can lob explosive grenades at you and do all kinds of interesting things to you, even from distance while you're in cover. You also have enemies that can hit you with poison. You have vehicles that can actually run up on you. So the game is much more interesting and that calls for a different way of playing. Now, all that being said, let's take a quick look at some PvE combat tactics that you can apply in your gameplay to give you the combat advantage over these NPCs. Alright, first things first, one of the first things that you need to do in regards to your combat tactics is you may have to tweak your UI. Now, this may not seem like a big issue for some players and they don't mind the default settings, but let me show you a few things that I've done to enhance my combat experience. For example, you can adjust the size of your map and visualize approaching enemy threats even much easier, or you can do some things like change your skill cooldown notification from just the skill cooldown bar to a numerical notification system by toggling that on or off in your UI. This is going to tell you definitely how much time you need before you can deploy your skill. And let me tell you, seconds matter in this game. So perhaps you may have five seconds left for your healing skill to cool down. You can either wait and cover and use that skill before you pop an armor kit. And if you have like 100 seconds left, then you know definitely you need an armor kit before you can actually be healed. So this is something that I feel is going to be helpful for a lot of people. Finally, on UI settings, you can visually see what skills other agents are running when you match make in a group. You can toggle this off or on, and this will help you decide what skills you need to run or what build you might need to actually use for the mission. Because this tells you what everybody is running, and that way you can actually leverage other potential skills that can benefit the entire team. In an instance like this, you're not going to have everybody running a drone because you now know that the other three players are running a drone. Well, what does that mean for you? You may have to run something else to actually give the team an extra advantage. The second combat tactic is your movement and your evasive tactics that you apply in combat. Now, movement in the Division 2 is quite slower than many of us are used to, especially coming from the Division 1, but a well-known trick from the Division veterans is using the cover-to-cover -cover maneuvers to increase your speed as you move from one point to another. In the Division 2, this tactic is actually more critical than it was in the Division 1 because the AI deals so much damage from early game and even through the end game. And one of their tactics is not just flanking you, but ensnaring you. That means they will come at you from three ways in three different directions that you may not be looking at in order to get you into a damage funnel. This is where using cover to cover tactics will be beneficial for you. If you were to engage in a normal run animation when you're getting focus fired, you're slower and you can easily be taken down. But if you use a cover to cover maneuver, you keep your agent's profile much hidden and you can avoid a lot of bullets that are coming your way. Another aspect to movement is vaulting over objects. Sometimes you're falling back from heavy enemy fire and you can run into obstacles. If you wish to vault effectively, you can just hold your vault button command as you're approaching an object to scale it without delay. The third combat tactic that I wanted to talk about is what I call the dodge reload mechanism, and there are two of them. The first one is reloading your weapon while moving from cover to cover. So when you engage a cover to cover motion, you hit your reload button, and if your weapon has a low reload speed, it will most likely be reloaded by the time you get to your next cover section. Now this can help you escape approaching NPCs. Maybe they flanked you and your magazine is empty and you start moving from cover to cover. And by the time you hit the next cover, you're ready to return fire. The second aspect of this is also an evasive reload mechanism that's slightly technical, but it's not something that you've not done. If you've played the division for anything more than even 200 hours, you found yourself actually doing it. This action is as you're reloading your weapon, you can in the same sequence dive roll in order to evade enemy fire. And then as you land, your magazine is already fully reloaded and you can return fire. This will keep your agent in motion and reduce the amount of focus damage that you're taking if you were maybe moving out in the open and trying to reload. 
Now, please note that this action only works with specific weapons and especially weapons that have a fast reload speed. It's impossible to pull this off with an LMG, but if you're running maybe an SMG and some of the assault rifles that have about a two second reload speed, you're able to do this. If you want to practice it, you can also use the sound of the magazine clip to actually know when to dive roll because it's almost a timed action. If you reload your magazine and some weapons, there are two clicks that you hear. That dive mechanism, you're going to actually do that in the middle of the first click closer to the second click. Go ahead and practice. It's something that you've done before just by reflex. And so for you to pull it off, you would actually have to master it to eventually pull it off more consistently. The fourth battle tactic that I wanted to speak about is your proper skill deployment. Now, some skills such as the drone or the firefly don't require you to bother with placement once they're deployed. They follow either you or whatever target you commanded to go to. But now when it comes to your turrets or your hive, which are stationary, then these are things that you actually need to learn to consider placing in a very strategic way. In the case of the turret, I would advocate for you to actually consider placing it in an area that has a wide field of view where the turret can fire with less obstacles or place it on a higher ground. Because when you get your turret on a higher ground, you've just gained a high ground advantage with constant automated fire and then you're gaining all the advantages of your turret. The turret is not just there just to shoot enemies or to create a distraction. It's actually there to do a lot more. It can provide damage, it can help suppress your enemies, and then also it can keep them at bay from you, which is less DPS that they're dealing and less damage that you're taking. So also note that you can also change your skill deployment settings from a double tap to a single press of the button in order to deploy them. But you have to be really careful because sometimes you may hit that button once and it will deploy a skill where you don't want it to. So personally, I don't use the single button press, but some people actually do it as well. I use the double button where I hit the button twice for it to deploy that skill. Another thing with the turret is when you're in cover, if you double tap that button, it will place the turret on top of the obstacle if the obstacle is within eye level. But if the obstacle is actually maybe bigger than you, it's not going to be able to do that. The fifth combat tactic is your corner maneuver. Now, the corner maneuver mechanic is a great one to leverage, and if you're flanked, you can easily make an escape within a small area of movement, and that is just moving around the corner. This is sure to help you avoid a lot of fire if NPCs are trying to move around your cover. Now, one thing that you can do is in your settings, you can speed up this action by increasing how fast you want this animation to actually go on button press. Now, please note that I would advise that you make this option to only be on button press for the command so that you don't go turn a corner straight into enemy fire, but you can make it fast. And so once you hit a cover and the enemies are trying to flank you, you can just on a button press move to the other side of the cover and avoid all that bullet damage. It's a small, subtle movement, but it's a movement that would definitely save your life, especially when you're faced with an elite NPC. Because those elite NPCs, they run with high firing weapons sometimes, like an SMG, and the moment they push their trigger, you're dead. They will literally melt you in like a few seconds. So use this tactic very wisely and make sure that you follow the settings carefully to your own preference. The sixth thing is to gain the higher ground. Now, I spoke about the turret being placed on a high level, but you placing yourself on higher ground gives you an advantage in order to be able to deal with NPCs that are below you. You see, the Division 2 game has a lot of verticality to it. In fact, if you notice, some of the missions, the NPCs actually spawn from a high-rise structure, and they also have the higher ground against you and use that advantage to try to take you out or your team. So this is because it's a valid tactical strategy. And so if you use it yourself, it's going to place you at a very awesome place in order to take out NPCs. If you're a sniper build, it is perfect for you. Even if you're an assault rifle build or an LMG build, it's also perfect for you as well. And so use trucks, bridges, balconies, stairways, and any area that will help you get the higher ground and elevate your own positioning while in combat. The seventh and the final combat strategy that I wanted to share is the heavy gunner strategy. There are many kinds of strategies that you can actually use in this game. And I would encourage for you to leave yours in the comment section below if I don't mention it. But the heavy gunner strategy is one of my favorites because this tactics is for those of us that love the LMGs. In the Division 2, once you start the game, the LMGs do everything written in their job description and even much more. Another thing that LMGs are actually very, very good at doing is applying the suppression mechanic. It's this suppression mechanic that you must use to help your team if you're playing in a group situation. I call this the heavy gunner role because this tactic requires you to hang back so that you can stay in cover 
or stay out of cover with the risk of taking very little damage and provide suppression fire for all of your teammates. This will reduce the amount of damage that your teammates are actually taking. It will do some other fun things like keeping the enemies in cover so that your sniper builds on that team can take them out. Or in the best case scenario, it can provide some serious damage and take out maybe rushing NPCs that may be rushing you on your group. I love to use this mechanic a lot when I'm playing in a group play because I'm a very big utility player. I pride myself on playing the support role and that's kind of my thing. So this suppression mechanism is one that's maybe overlooked, but I use it a lot. It's like Rambo and I really enjoy using it. Anyways, that's all I have for this video, but I don't want this video to actually end with all the combat tactics. I want you, the veterans of the game, and those of you who figured out some really cool ways to play, to please leave in the comment section those things that you do to enhance your combat experience. Maybe it's something like using a specific skill. Perhaps it's running a particular mod on your gear or on your weapons. Let us know in the comment section so that other people can benefit from the discussion. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I trust the community to help you answer these questions. If somebody has an answer for your question, I'll be spending some time reading the comments as well. Now on to clan details. I've already created a clan and it's called Dads of the Division and it's on PC. So if you play on the PC platform and you want to join the clan, go ahead and join. It's an open clan group. I eventually, hopefully down the road, would love to create another clan on PlayStation and on Xbox, but that's probably going to take a little bit of time because they have to cover enough ground here on PC and then hopefully eventually move on to the console platforms. But that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for your time and audience. I appreciate you guys' feedback, and I guess I'll see you in my next video. Peace.